will give one more minute for people to join. There is some people pending joining. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone uh, on board, uh, thanks for coming tonight. And uh, I promise it will not be that lengthy, yet very joyful discussion on uh, CCT Caesar in Intensive Care Medicine uh, and Saving Lives Academy. And this will be the sixth lecture in that series. Uh, before starting, I would like to welcome uh, our tonight's guest, uh, Dr. Hatem Suleiman uh, Abu Mari, uh, and I would like to say, uh, please accept uh, a virtual punch of flowers, uh, Dr. Hatem, and uh, I'm going to introduce him after this slide. Uh, just a few highlighting points here. Your questions, as usual, are always welcome. And the setup of tonight's session is a little bit different. So we are going with Dr. Hatim a section by section because it's a different process completely and lengthy one. So we'll go uh, section by section. So please, if you have any question on the section he is talking about, feel free to raise your hand. I'll open the mic for you and then you ask your question straight away. And if we have any questions at the end, you're always welcome. Uh, so uh, Dr. Hatim Suleiman Abu Mari. Uh, he is uh, a graduate of uh, Egypt, and he's, he's, he's like high, have high, good number of qualifications. So he had a Master of Science and MRCP, European Diploma of Intensive Care, the Fellow uh, of uh, European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging, and he is currently working as a cardiothoracic intensive care consultant in Herfield Hospital, Royal Brompton, and Herfield Hospitals. Uh, in London, UK. So I know Dr. Hazim, Dr. Hatem from a few years back, teaching together in ultrasound in critically ill patient under the American Society of Critical Care Medicine. So uh, again, I would like to highlight a few points here. We have no conflict of interest. Uh, we have no legal responsibility for any advice given herein. And please make sure that you review the latest guidelines before submitting your application. Your questions are always welcome. Thanks for watching in advance. Dr. Hatem, please start sharing your presentation and open your mic, please. I will open the mic for you now. Uh, Dr. Walid, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Shukran jazeelan, Dr. Walid, for the invitation. Um, I'm very grateful uh, to be with my colleagues uh, sharing my experience in uh, the Caesar pathway. Um, and as we discussed um, uh, before the, the meeting, we thought that probably the best way to do this is to hold a sort of an interactive discussion uh, based on your questions. So I, I don't have a sort of a formal presentation. I think this is something that I'm doing here for you. وانا يهمني ان حضراتكم يعني توجهوني بالاسئله بتاعتكم وان شاء الله قدر المستطاع اقدر اجاوب عليها من خلال خبرتي انا لسه مخلص السيزر بقالي اقل من سنه فيعني ان شاء الله we have information that we will help you with this باذن الله I just, uh, Dr. Hatim, uh, I'm sorry, just I should have said that uh, in the beginning. Uh, we have few colleagues uh, from Pakistan and sure. India. They are non-Arabic speakers. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I know that it's my mistake, so my apologies, uh, dear no, friends. No but but you, didn't, you didn't miss anything. He's just no, say saying again. hello to everyone. I will no, say it's fine. It <laughs> it's fine. I, thank you. Yeah, actually, I was wondering and I wanted to ask you, but thank <laughs> you for letting me. I was That's my mistake. Saying, I'm sorry for that. No, for not a problem. I was saying that I discussed with Dr. Walid before the, the this webinar, and we thought that the best way is to make it an interactive, case-based uh, discussion based on your questions. I just freshly finished the Caesar in intensive care, and I think I and I know as well that you had several sessions with Dr. Walid's academy on the Caesar in other 
specialties. So I think the best way that I will do this, in my opinion, after sharing with Dr. Walid, is to be guided by your questions. And I just prepared here um, like a couple of slides, especially stressing on uh, how I did my logbook in clinical cases and procedures. And I will show you this when the time comes. Um, so I, I would like to start with the first thing, why I did the Caesar. And why not? Uh, would, uh, especially so, sorry, Abraham, would you would you like to put it on the full screen mode, the full presentation mode? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So wh why why the Caesar, for example? I know people when people think of coming to the UK and working here, and the way for you to go into a consultant position, uh, especially the substantive consultant position, you should be on the specialist register for that. And the, the two pathways for being on the specialist register in intensive care is to whether do the Caesar or do the CCT, which is the pathway that evolves after your specialist training completion. The Caesar is the certificate of equivalence in specialist training, and it is mainly done for people who has done uh, uh, some time in this specialty and have got good experience in it and they don't want to go back and start the training from the beginning. So I, I will tell you my perspective on it because I have been in the system for a few years and I can see the differences. But the reason I started doing the Caesar from the beginning that I was working already as an intensivist for almost more than 10 years before coming to the UK. And I didn't feel that starting the training from the beginning is the way for me, but it doesn't necessarily tell that this is the way for everyone. There are pros and cons with the Caesar. I think in my opinion, the pros of the Caesar, if you have done a good part of intensive care and you feel that you can get good amount of documentation of the training that you have got before coming to the UK, I think the Caesar will probably save you some time. The other thing, the Caesar will give you flexibility in terms of doing specialist training in the areas that you want to do without needing to start from scratch and do everything from the beginning. Um, I know now that the CCT has been granted to those who already um, had uh, the, combi the combined pathway, as they say, which they usually previously were given the Caesar CP. But this is a great news, and it makes it easier for you to start, not from the co-training level as an SHO, but from ST3 level, which is the earliest phases of registrar. Uh, the, I think the pros of training as a specialist training and, and applying for is that you will have a pathway that is already made for you without the hassles of applying for jobs uh, or without the hassle of being stressed about the dynamic nature of uh, changing jobs every six months, which was the case for me and all of my colleagues. When we came to the UK, we remained on a temporary contract all the time. It all, it's all about staying on a six monthly contract. You have to prove yourself. There's nothing guaranteed about staying in the same job, uh, depending on the logistics, depending on the need of the place. And that is the case for fellows who are going through the Caesar pathway. But if you are going for training, although you will start at a younger age, Probably if you are someone at a senior level, it will be guaranteeing pathway for you to go through what you want to do. Again, the other thing about training, specialist training, that it, it doesn't necessarily tell you which is the area of training that you will be allocated to, whether in London or outside London. And there are some varieties. The training overall is very good in intensive care medicine, but no one can deny that there are varieties in regional levels of training between some areas of London and between outside London. Many areas of outside London are very good. But again, this is something that you cannot control if you are in a training pathway. But if you have Caesar, you can choose in terms of you can apply for jobs, you can move from here to there um, and go for what you want. I think it's all about your position. If you are at the senior level, and if you want my advice, and I always tell my colleagues, if you are in a senior level, and also age could be a potential factor here, I would advise you to, uh, to go for the Caesar pathway, but you have to be strategic. 
in the way you think about the plan, the preparation and the documentation. So moving forward, Dr. Walid, would you like to guide me with your questions or you would want me I, to? I would just highlight one, one, one essential point because if we are comparing the three pathways, two out of these three pathways are valid only from United Kingdom. And I think most of our people interested in the Caesar pathway are currently uh, applying from overseas, like from Ireland, from different European countries, or even uh, Egypt, India, and Pakistan, uh, and different Gulf areas. So I think Caesar is the unique way uh, and the most advantageous way if we are trying to get specialist registration in intensive care medicine. Uh, otherwise, we need to go to work inside the United Kingdom and do the training scheme or the Caesar CP. So I think this is the only way it's not pros and goes like we have to take the cons uh, because this is the only pathway available for anyone wants to go on the specialist register from overseas. Am I right with that, Dr. Adam? It's absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely. You can apply from the Caesar from outside. You don't need to come to the UK to do the Caesar. Unlike it. ways, absolutely. Okay. So uh, uh, do any of our guest uh, colleagues uh, have any questions in the first part? Please raise hands. I'll open the mic for you. And okay, Dr. Hatem, go ahead, please. Thank you, Dr. Ali. So, uh, so now we, we thought that we want to do the Caesar. What can we do? I, I think very important at this point to get uh, advice from a friend it's my honest and sincere advice. Find someone that you know closely and try to be in touch with him and get the advices from him. I wouldn't be able to do this without the advice of very good friends who really tolerated my persistence and questions all the way because it is something that we have never done before. And you will keep having questions arising with you on the go. Very important to find someone. I, would, I wouldn't call him mentor, but I would call him like a peer support on the way from the beginning. Someone who has done it. And I'm telling not for someone who is trying to do it. I'm telling someone who has completed it. And preferably someone who has completed it recently. So he will be aware of the latest updates. We all know that GMC changes things every few years. Sometimes they used to have the manual application and then they changed the application on the website into a completely online application. And this is the application that I submitted. So when I decided that I will want to do the Caesar, I was not in the UK, I was uh, outside the UK, I was working in Abu Dhabi, and I sought the advice of a colleague. Um, maybe I can finish this and I will probably, uh, we will let uh, our colleagues to give their questions. Um, and I called him and I asked him, uh, what do you think? And maybe someone that you all know, he's a great friend of mine and Ahmed Al Haddad. I think you probably all met him before. Ahmed is was, uh, Ahmed Al Haddad was my guide for um, uh, the steps, especially the beginning of my planning for Caesar. I was in Abu Dhabi, he was here, and by the time uh, he was in the process of doing the Caesar. And the, only adv the first advice he gave me, get papers from there, from Abu Dhabi. And this was a golden advice because the papers I got from my work there, they saved me two years from the time I needed to do my Caesar here because I was able to get papers in medicine. I was able to get papers in two of the specialist sections of Caesar in ICM. And I will tell you about the sections needed shortly for those of you who don't know it, um, but this was very important. Yes, I wasn't aware of the formality and I asked him for uh, like, as we always ask, just send me a, a one page of what you've done. How the, does the logbook look like? How the, the letter look, look like? And I submitted and I asked the guys over there in, in the hospital and they were very helpful and supportive. They gave me papers for every specialty I submitted for medicine. I brought reference letters, general reference letters. And I brought clinical cases logbooks. I brought procedural logbooks. And I brought as well uh, the case-based discussions, 
DOPSES and CBDs. The three of them are called workplace-based assessments. So this is, a, and I brought rotas as well, very important to bring rotas. Uh, when you go through the, um, uh, the, um, the specialty-specific guidance of the GMC on the intensive care, you will find lots of details on what you need to submit for every section, but those are the core things that you need to do. Um, and I did that and I wasn't sure that this will be accepted or not. I have to be honest with you. I wasn't sure. But I, I brought that with me and I came here. And then I started from the beginning working in a cardiothoracic intensive care. Uh, and then the journey will continue after that. So maybe we can allow a question from... Uh... Okay, so we had two questions. Uh, so uh, Deepak, uh, please, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Hatem, and thank you, Walid, uh, for uh, letting me speak. Uh, Hatem, I just wanted to ask you a question about the anesthesia rotation. Uh, the anesthesia rotation. Specialty, yeah. yeah, the previous specialty guidance was a bit uh, not clear about the anesthesia rotation, but the, uh, the current specialty guidance, which is a new one according to the new curriculum, has mentioned two cut forms for the anesthesia rotation. Can you please elaborate what you did for your anesthesia uh, part for the seizure application? So this is, a, this is a very important question, uh, um, dear colleague, because actually this was the main roadblock on my way to have the Caesar. So the, the point about Caesar uh, in any specialty that the GMC mainly recognizes or the weight of evidence, as they call, is the weight of evidence that you obtain for the last five years before application. And that is the key of the Caesar. So my anesthetic work and training was long time before that. So I needed to do a 12 months of anesthesia. And I did 12 months of anesthesia separately while working here in the UK. And this is the way I applied my anesthetic section. I had to do everything. And I did full anesthetic documentation, including a uh, uh, number of lists. And it doesn't only require the duration, but you have to submit a certain number of lists. So I know friends who submitted a year with maybe 80 lists, for example, and this was brought back requesting further evidence. So you have to provide evidence that you have performed an adequate number of uh, lists that is equivalent to one year of anesthetic training. And I, I think from my experience and my other colleagues experience, 100 lists is probably the golden number. Because I know friend, I have submitted 140 lists. And I know a friend who submitted initially 80 lists, and the papers brought back, and they asked him to do another couple of weeks of anesthetic lists. So I think 100 is what they look for. But this has to be spread over a 12 months of duration for anesthetic training. Would you ask me if I left my ITU job to do that? I didn't. I was doing this as an honorary contract beside my clinical intensive care work. It was too much, I know, but this was the only way for me. I didn't think that I can stop doing my ITU work just to do separate anesthetic work. And I know many people who did that. They applied for an honorary contract in another hospital here. While, And I'm talking about people who are working in the UK while doing the Caesar at this point. But if you are applying from abroad, whatever documentation you need to submit is a 12 months of anesthetic training that include the number of lists, include uh, uh, the logbook for procedures, the rotors, the full requirement of uh, the workplace-based assessment. So the workplace-based assessment, according to the GMC and ICM, they require for every three months block of training, three forms. One of them is CBD, one of them is DOPS, and one of them is called ACEX or MINICEX, Clinical Examination Assessment. So if you talk about three different forms every three months. So meaning that in a year, you will require 12 forms. And you can definitely do that retrospectively. 
if you are collecting your papers retrospectively. This is the number that we consider a proof of your experience of training in this section. And this applies all the way to all parts of the ICM curriculum, whether anesthetics, medicine, pediatric, neuro, or, uh, or general ITU. I hope I answered your question uh, well. Perfect, Dr. Dr. Hatem, perfect. Uh, so uh, we have something here in the chat. Okay, that, okay so Deepak says, uh, thanks, Hatem, that was helpful. Uh, Farwat is, uh, has a question. Please feel free, Farwat, to unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. How are you, Dr. Hatem? Delighted to have you tonight. Thank you for this great opportunity, Olid. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Uh, Dr. Hatim, uh, regarding the anesthesia, you mentioned that you need at least 100 lists. Do you mean by this the logbook, or shall I bring the, the lists uh, as we are receiving it in the theater? This is number one. Uh, number two, for the forms for the DOPS and mini kicks. Uh, and CBDs. Uh, did, did you use the, the uh, college, the intensive care college forms for that, or there is some other forms, or any other forms can uh, be uh, got for for this purpose? And you mentioned that we we sh we should uh, get one CBD, one mini kicks, and uh, one dose every three months. So the minimum is twelve per, per year. So this will apply for every module. Uh, I, I mean, if I went for a, a, a post-cardiac surgery intensive care for neuro-intensive care module, I need three months, three months, and so on. So every three months, I have to submit DOPS, Minicax, um, and uh, the other forms. And the min the, uh, at the meantime, I, I should submit also the logbox for every module, and I asked you already about the electronic signature, and you mentioned that it, it is accepted. Uh, are you sure from this, or you have experience, personal experience with the electronic signature accepted by the GMC and the college, or this is your personal opinion, or based on uh, some uh, uh, um, other experiences from the other people? Thank you. Sure. No problem. So let's take the questions from the beginning then. There were about three or four questions. So I, I try to remember the, the sequence. Uh, for the an anesthesia, the anesthesia, the hundred lists. Yeah, the anesthesia. So uh, these yeah. are the lists. You don't need to submit every patient that you put, but you need to provide the logbook. Okay, perfect. Containing the lists. So you have day list here, day, evening list. Also, if you have on calls, if you have an aesthetic on calls, that is better. I didn't do on calls because I was doing an honorary fellowship and I was an asset show. So I, I, I did maybe a couple of on calls in the year and it, it's not necessary. But the, the, the answer to the first question is the logbook, which contains the number of lists. Uh, and of course, the number of days, because this will show how many days that you have done in the 12 years. Um, and this is the first question. Uh, Dr. Hatem, uh, sorry, I need to stop you here. Some yeah. hospitals do morning list and afternoon list. Will this count as just one day and one list or one day and two lists? No, so like there lists. is an AM, two lists. So there is an AM list and PM list. So the, the I, was, I was trained in Chelsea at Westminster Hospital and they were doing mm -hmm. the same morning and afternoon. And it counts as two lists if you have morning and afternoon. Perfect. That's good. So you can important. finish that in like 50 days or 60 days and you're done. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. So we have loads of questions here. Uh, a question from uh, Mu'min. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. The coffee is here. I, I didn't drink my coffee yet. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I thought so this, the electronic signature, uh, Dr. Sarwat, from my experience and my colleague experience, it is accepted. The most important thing for the GMC officer is to, to make sure 
that the person who is his signature present or the person that you put your name even in the proforma is the one who will uh, confirm and the verification email from them. I mean, even the signature itself, you know, you know that the, the system changed now from needing to sign and stamp every paper into providing a pro forma for every section. And maybe this is something that I could tell everyone for those who don't have such information yet. You need, you don't need like before to submit every paper signed and stamped by someone, by a consultant. Now you need to get all the, uh, for example, every evidence you got from one hospital need to be signed, uh, need to be approved and uh, submitted along with a pro forma that is filled by you and by the approving consultant from this hospital. I, I saw from my experience with the GMC people that even this pro forma doesn't need to be stamped. The most important thing for them is that when this person who is signing the pro forma for you should be the same person who answers their email because all the people who will sign you off in the pro forma their names will be with you with them as your verifiers and they have to answer privately with the gmc as your verifier and this is the most important thing they are very strict about that i'll tell you something which this is not uncommon so one of my consultants who gave me, who did the papers for, the, for Abu Dhabi for me, he changed the hospital. And this is not uncommon. So his email changed. Okay. His email changed because he changed the hospital. And they, they mainly ask for the, uh, the office email. This is the formal email, the corporate email address. So when I sent telling them that his email has changed and I contacted him and I'm giving you his new email, they said, no, we don't accept that. He has to call us on our mobile himself, uh, not the mobile, on our GMC number, apologies, to confirm the change of the email address. So this is how the GMC works. Direct official uh, uh, verification of the signatures and of the changes in the names of the verifiers. But no one was bothering about the signature. No one was, I, I'm very few of my performers were even stamped, but all of them were done by the same person who verified with the GMC. This is my experience. So electronic signatures definitely work. I, I, I think because I mean, half of my papers were made from Egypt, from the UAE. So a lot of my performers I needed to submit from Alexandria, from Sharjah, where I worked initially, and then Abu Dhabi. And all these were electronic signatures, because I, how can I meet these people? And I was submitting in the middle of the COVID pandemic. or that's even. Uh, so I hope this is clear for you. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's very clear. Thank you. I'd like, I would like to add one point here, Dr. Hatton, uh, about the pro forma. If you work it in a hospital and you submitted a pro forma and signed by one of your verifiers, and you need to add any add-on evidence from the same hospital, it needs to be in a new pro forma from the same verifier. You cannot use two verifiers from the same hospital. That's absolutely forbidden by the GMC regulations. So if you submitted this person as your verifier in Matter Hospital, and you want to add any more evidence from the Matter Hospital, it has to be the same person who verified the initial pro forma. And that's very essential to know. Yeah, absolutely. And also, as you've said, any changes to the evidence you are submitting, like they usually reply as we will go through and the GMC will ask you for further, further documents, for example, or further changes to the, to the application. Any changes will mandate a new pro forma. Any changes, even smallest changes, will mandate a new, which was one of my biggest headaches in the application. But this is this is the only way. You yeah. have to submit new proof. And because I was embarrassed, some of the changes were with um, with my consultants in Abu Dhabi or even uh, Alexandria, and I needed to call them every every week, please. And at the end, and here comes the signature, Doctor Sarwat. Yes. 
Yes. They were telling me, even I did the, the few performers I submitted after the updates, they didn't have signatures, but they have the performer has to be approved by this consultant because they are going to send him random documents from those performers to confirm that he's the one who verified. Yeah. Correct. Uh, uh, regarding the other point, the <laughs> uh, did you use the college forms for DOPS, Minicax, CBDs? Yes, or, I know, did. I'll show you an example of my, my uh, logbook. So this is my logbook. I only used uh, the the Faculty of Intensive Care Medicine um, uh, logbook templates, and uh, but to an extent, a procedure logbook we have a nice form which is this one. But if you ask me about the clinical cases logbook, I didn't find something that suits me, so I used uh, Al Haddad's uh, form, and this is from Ahmed Al Haddad, and I'm I'm showing it to you. This is the one I submitted, the same one that contain what they need. I want you to notice something. So do you see what I highlighted here? So when you submit, my application returned three times to me from the GMC. Because when I submitted first my log my logbook, as you can see here, I forgot about the date. The logbook has to be clearly dated at the top of the page. As you've seen here, and they recommend, this is from the officer of the GMC, that you highlight your name and the date of this in every document. I didn't, you don't need to put the date in every document, but you, you need to put your name at the top of every document, as I'm showing in the second page here of the logbook, because this logbook was 10 pages. This is a clinical cases logbook. Of course, you have the age, you have the sex, you have the diagnosis, but it is very important to submit the duration which the logbook covers at the top of the logbook itself, along with the name of the hospital, as you can see, and the, the type of the logbook, cardiothoracic ICU. This is very important. I can tell you, my application completely returned once because of this, and I had to do this for every single paper. That's very important. Dr. Hatim, if you go back, was that the logbook summary? Like how many procedures you did? Because it's, it's a bit, the words are a little bit small. I cannot really yeah, yeah. Uh, read what's written there. So this is a logbook summary, like how many bronchoscopes, how many tracheostomies you yeah. did, how many echoes. So procedure. that's a logbook summary. That's a procedure logbook summary, yeah. Okay, and if you go to the next page, see, yes. So this is just uh, mentioning the patient age, gender, and the diagnosis, is that everything required in the logbook? Because in anesthesia logbook, it's completely different. I know, I know. It's, I know it's very comprehensive. So it's, it's, it's just the diagnosis. So they can get an idea about how many cases you manage it and the varieties of the cases. Is that is that by everything? The, by the way, this is my anesthetic uh, logbook was the same as you mentioned. And I, I didn't yeah. bring it here because I'm sure that you showed it to them before. Yeah, yeah, but the aesthetic like, logbook I, is the same. Good. It has to be good. detailed with all the, and you have to show the spread of the things that you have done, whether general, whether mm. uh, uh, PEDS regional. Or, yes, oh, yeah, or perfect. Bariatric so, or regional. But this is the ITU logbook. Good. I, I don't want to, to make the mistake twice. Did you finish your questions, Sarwat? Uh, yeah, st still, still uh, one question for uh, the um, ED um, module, Dr. Hatim. It is written in the curriculum that is required for six months. How did you do that? You mean the, uh, the, the medicine module? Uh, the, uh, medicine the medicine and ED. For one year, including six months emergency. Okay. So what I understand from this what I understand, they need one year of medicine as part of the Caesar um, intensive care curriculum. But if you have six months of, of emergency medicine, it will be counted. If you don't have the six month emergency medicine, you will have to do 12 months of medicine. Mm -hmm. This is what I understand and what my colleagues done, but there are some situations from the GMC that 
we know that it happens with others. I have I heard about a colleague who has done his Caesar tw- t- 10 years ago here in London, and he submitted his uh, uh, his military service as he was a doctor in the military for a year. And they calculated this as six months. So any medicine that you have done since you finished medical school could be counted. But the older the medicine, the the farther away from the five years, the less is the weight in calculation. So when they when they sent me my my uh, my acceptance letter at the end, they explained everything to me, and I I, I I actually my medicine was submitted from my hospital in Abu Dhabi because I knew that I need medicine and I, that's why I'm very grateful because it saved me one year. I submitted papers of medicine because I was part of the outreach team. <coughs> And we were doing a lot of shifts uh, in outreach, and we are uh, actively doing the acute medicine section in this hospital, apart from ITU. And I submitted that. But to my surprise, they counted my medicine as partly my critical care experience in Alexandria. So they looked at my three years of critical care medicine that I did in Alexandria, and they counted this as medicine. And they told me that I have done medicine more than they need. And I never expected them to count the critical care three years as medicine. Yeah. Okay, so that's a very important point, Dr. Hatem. Maybe 80 or 90% of the attendees here came from anesthesia background, even if they did not practice anesthesia after the training program, and they're working for the last 15 years as an intensivist. How detailed this section because i think the core of tonight's session is medicine because everyone here is working as an intensivist if he needs to submit evidence from medicine what is required exactly and in details please have sure so where so what i did the very the most important thing is a letter letter but i would suggest that when you prepare a letter you don't just submit reference letter You need to, this is what I did. You submit something called appraisal summary. So the system in the UK is based on appraisals. Every now and every year you have an appraisal. So to prove them or to show them that you have worked properly in this specialty, let's say medicine, you need to prepare a letter that contains the details of your experience in medicine over the 12 months. So this letter will be written to you and will be signed and dated and stamped by your supervisor in your hospital. And it will contain the duration covered, the, the 12 months duration. You, you don't need to do this straight, you do it uh, continuously, by the way, you can do it interrupted. That's another thing. But the, the minimum amount of, uh, of evidence that you can submit separately is six weeks, the minimum. So it is advisable that you do 12, two months blocks. Uh, do you see what I mean? If you want to separate the 12 months retrospectively, you have to do at least two months blocks. You cannot do one month block, for example. Then you need to put in the letter, uh, the hospital capacity, the unit capacity, what uh, the staffing of the unit, very brief. It's, it's, I think, I don't know, probably the same in Ireland as well. The, your appraisal will contain information about the unit, the staffing, your roles in the department. And this is not a lookbook. It's an appraisal summary. And then it will go through the skills that you have done during this period. And then it will talk about your clinical skills, your knowledge skills, and your professional behavior. Those are the very important three domains that have to be covered in this letter. So it's it's a it's a bit of a detailed reference letter, but I would name it appraisal summary, and this is what I did, and put details into this appraisal summary. By the way, this is uh, the form I learned from a few of my. Uh, European friends. Uh, this is not from uh, Ahmed or any other friends. I saw their forms and they had this appraisal summary uh, form 
uh, which is detailed, and I think it is more accurate and reliable than the reference letter. This is number one. So I would do appraisal summary for medicine. I would definitely submit, you have to submit logbooks like this. So I, I submitted similar one to this logbook for medicine cases. Acute medicine can be counted, but preferably medicine. And this has to cover the broad range of the medical cases as per the curriculum. You have to look at the curriculum and submit the cases covered in the curriculum. There is something important that I submitted, and I don't know if it's still in the new update required or not, which is <clears throat> the 50 cases. There are 50 mandatory cases in intensive care curriculum that you need to submit evidence of um, workplace-based assessment or case-based discussions. So those 50 cases cover the whole range of the curriculum, medicine, cardiac, pediatric, neuro. I did the 50 cases. And this is in either way will support your workplace based assessment in all the sections. You have to submit rotas. Sometimes I was stuck with, uh, with getting the former rota itself and signing it and stamping it or signing it. So what I did, I did something like this, exactly like this table, like this logbook. And I put rota at the top. Again, you have to put the hospital name and the date. And then you write uh, the date and on the left side, you write the date. On the right side, you write day or night, whatever you did on this day. It's a lot of work, but this is what I did. And this will be the rota for medicine. So rota, logbook, workplace-based assessment, and the appraisal summary. So you cannot take that box in the medicine rotation if you are working in intensive care by any means. So you have to leave and make... Oh, no no additional way. days, no way. So you no can way. make it I, just I additional you, day. Ahmed, my colleague, Ahmed Haddad, had to do uh, medicine. He had to do medicine as a show when he was working as a local consultant. Okay, that, that, that explains it. Okay, perfect. That's more than enough. Last point on it, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Hatim, uh, do you mean by the outreach service you have done in Abu Dhabi? the consultation and the rapid response team. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, 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 that's, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, good. Tarwin. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have a few questions here in the chat box, then we'll take uh, the raised hands. So uh, Mu'min uh, Muhammad was asking a few questions answered already. Does ER need a logbook or not? Everything so how you, you do? Everything you submit, Logbook is important because it shows them that you act actually worked and did that. Okay. So, I think what is what is the form of the ER logbook? Is it the same as this one from the intensive care? It is the same okay. because you will you will need two types of logbooks. You will need a clinical cases logbook like this one. Okay. You will need a procedure logbook like this one. Okay. Yeah, the summary. Okay, perfect. And um, a question from Muhammad Anwar. If you are applying for Caesar Intensive Care Medicine, do you need to have also an anesthesia background? You're a good example for that, Dr. Hatton. I'm, I don't have an anesthesia background. Yes. I applied. I had a critical care uh, training in Alexandria. I'm not an anesthetist. So you, the answer is no, you don't need an aesthetic background. You don't need, um, uh, you, there's no, sp the, the, this is a good thing about Caesar. It's flexible. So you can do the Caesar anyway. I know cardiologists who are doing Caesar now. They are cardiologists, purely cardiologists, and they are doing Caesar and ICM. So, but you have to know what you need to do. Okay, perfect. Uh, a question from uh, Peter Suleiman. Peter, feel free to unmute yourself, please. Okay. Go ahead. Um, um, hi, and uh, thank you for letting me in. Um, my first question is about um, the proper documentation from Egypt. I'm from Alexandria, by the way, and I have spent four years in Alexandria. Currently, I'm working on, uh, with uh, Dr. Haddad, by the way, in St. Mary's. Um, so I'm asking if, if my... I can... <laughs> if I can start from scratch in the UK, if, if I couldn't bring any proper documentation from Egypt, or 
or how can I bring the documentation from, from Egypt if, if, uh, if this is a question here? So first of all, you have to, this is, by the way, we haven't discussed that. Mm -hmm. so thank you for alerting me. You need to submit to the GMC evidence of continued work since you finished medical school. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to submit detailed logbook or whatever we discussed for the period of your work in Egypt if it's beyond five years before the application. Mm. This has to be clear. So you need paper of continuous work. Any paper you have, submit. So if you have logbooks from Alexandria, that will be amazing. Why not? But if you don't, it will not stop your application. What will stop your application if something of those uh, logbooks or rotas or some of these important things is not contained in the last five years of evidence that you're submitting. Okay. Uh, so let me, uh, so what I did, I had already um, my uh, critical care uh, experience certificate from Alexandria, which is the one I submitted. And by the way, when you submit the, the section with the proforma, you don't only submit the training part. If you look at the performa, it has lots of things. It has appraisals, it has audits, it has lectures. So anything, I submitted lectures. I did in Alexandria, local lectures, with my training certificate along with the performa. Uh -huh. To, uh, like, Ustazna, Dr. Akram Faid, he was my verifier. He yeah. is, I sent him everything during this. So not only the training, everything that you did around this time, submit together with the perform. Okay. Perfect. I hope it answers so, your question. Perfect. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any more questions, Peter? Um, yes, but correct me if I'm wrong in that question. If um, Caesar Busway um, is the papers, should be all like papers, not there is no e-portfolio like in the training busway. Am I right in that? No, you. If you have e-portfolio, you it will help completely. Help. I didn't, so mine was were papers. But now e-portfolio is available. You can have your own e-portfolio, and maybe Walid will give you more information on that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's many uh, e-portfolios uh, available, paid or for free. So like in Ireland, we have our portfolio online on the College of Anistes of Ireland, and there is something called lifelong. Uh, e-portfolio now in the United Kingdom, I submitted a request uh, to uh, put myself in this one, and they came back to me after maybe a week or eight days asking if uh, I am uh, a fellow of the College of Anesthesia and I'm paying the fees for the College of Anesthesia in the UK, they would put me, otherwise I cannot be on that one. So if you, are, if you have the FRCA or you have, if you are a fellow and paying the regular fees, uh, you can be on this lifelong e-portfolio. Otherwise, there is no uh, way. At least this is what I got from uh, their email. Uh, any more questions, Peter? No, thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Uh, otherwise, uh, paper portfolio will be fine. Uh, so uh, next question is from uh, Bashir El Gamal. Please feel free to unmute yourself, Bashir. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, uh, Hatem. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. Really, it's very nice. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you clearly. I'm thank sure. you very Go much. Ahead. Uh, uh, really, it's amazing presentation and um, a lot of questions. It's clear now for me. But uh, if we look for the uh, the uh, the forms here for um, DOPS or uh, CBDX or uh, CBD. CBD, uh, CB, it's called what? Case-based discussion, sorry. Case-based discussion, yeah. Uh, there, is, uh, there is something, it's called GMC number of the consultant. Sometimes the consultant didn't have GMC. It's having it a matter. Irish it doesn't uh, matter. number. And sometimes he, the consultant has um, the uh, general registration in GMC, but he's a consultant here in Ireland. Uh, it is applicable to write Irish uh, Medical uh, Council number or uh, it need it must be submitted with GMC number? No, no, it doesn't matter at all. I told you I submitted from people in Abu Dhabi. They don't have any UK registration. Okay, that's it doesn't matter. 
And uh, yeah. the logbook from the College of Intensive Care here in Ireland, because I, I'm submitting my logbook, uh, by the way, on the College website. This need to be stamped or without uh, any stamp? No stamps are needed anymore. Only the pro forma? Only the, the, the pro forma is the only thing. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for that. No problem. Good. So uh, I have a question here from Muhammad Anwar be, before we take uh, Muzaffar and Deepak. Uh, performance uh, form or appraisal form, could it be signed by a medicine consultant or it must be by intensive care consultant? Oh, that is, that is a good question. So I think they look into who is signing for you. So if you're submitting medicine, it can be done by, uh, by intensive care consultant, but not by a pediatric intensive care consultant, for example. So it has to be relevant somehow, preferably by someone that has medicine beside his name. Like, like my, the, my papers, are, so I submitted actually several uh, reference letters for medicine from three or four consultants that I worked with. But um, it's important to have the relevance between the consultant specialty and the, the whatever you're submitting for. So uh, intensive care consultant can sign for medicine, but pediatric ICU consultant cannot sign for medicine. Yeah, so you know now is like, there is multiple consultants, specialities can do intensive care, like surgeon can do intensive care medicine in Saudi Arabia. Uh, pediatrics, as you said, uh, will, it will not count, but we need a pulmonologist or medicine or cardiologist plus intensive care medicine. Is that what you want to say? I think so. I mean, this is yeah. what I did. I, uh, okay. I, this is how I, my impression that you, it needs, needs to be relevant yeah. uh, to what you submit. Yeah. And again, if, if, if we don't have uh, dear colleagues, we don't want to be like misleading uh, neither me nor Dr. Hadden at all. If we have any doubt or we don't get, give you a clear cut answer, please immediately go to the General Medical Council. I didn't see in my life people helpful as those people. Like I am emailing them. I'm getting the email back within a couple of days with detailed answer. Like I'm asking in three, four, four words and they're coming be in a half paper. So they are like really comprehensive. They are really interested to help you. Uh, so and, and get that. I'm always stressing this point uh, and may, maybe Dr. Hatem agrees with me. If you email them, and they email you back, that's a proof or evidence you have in your hand. So if anything changes after that, you can prove that I had this discussion and depending on this discussion, I did so and so. So that's you have, you have a proof now. Do you agree for that, uh, Dr. Hatem? That agree, email, yeah. e e emailing is an evidence in your hand. And they are, as you've said, they are extremely helpful. Whether you call them or you email them, they are really supportive, I have to say. Although, and maybe we haven't yet talked about that, the GMC officer role is very important. They give you headache in terms of sending you back the application, but this is the way for you to succeed because yes. they know how to make the application successful when they submit to the Royal College. Yes. They, they sort of squeeze you out to make sure that your application fulfills the criteria that the college needs. So I cannot thank enough the GMC officers for looking at the details of, I told you about, the date is not there for every single paper. And this is the only way for the application to be approved by the college. At one point, by the way, I know friends who insisted on submitting the application to the college before doing the changes recommended by the GMC. And the application was rejected without, without any I mean, without hesitation. Yeah, and at the end of each email, they are asking for modifications. They are asking you, if you are happy to submit your application as is, we are more than happy, but they are really sincere in their advice. Muzaffar, Muzaffar, please uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. I'm from UK Telford, near to Birmingham. Uh, so... Uh, I just uh, moved from Abu Dhabi, eh, sorry, Dubai to uh, UK five months back. And I have most of the experience from ITU of Saudi Arabia and Dubai. 
and i i have got all my training from india in intensive care and, and before that i was working in anesthesia so i have got training in anesthesia which is actually more than 5 year old and then itu training from india but i am working mainly on itu so when i i have uh, uh, i am i'm not doing uh, working as a locum consultant itu here but the thing is it was that i am facing the same problem that to get competencies for anesthesia and medicine which require f- for uh, require one year the pro- uh, so what arrangement our trust is doing at present that they are giving one day a week in um, medicine and one day a week in anesthesia i just wanted to know will it be s- sufficient if i do for some time like 6 month or 8 month like this one 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 day in anesthesia and one day in in uh, uh, in, in uh, med- uh, acute medicine or medicine so will it su- be sufficient for the uh, uh, as per requirement and i fulfill all the you know yeah. competencies during that period so actually i know about i heard and i i i knew about colleagues who submitted their application with only 8 months of anesthesia and it worked for them so whatever i told is my own experience and this the caesar is a very individual thing so there is luck there is individuality if if this is your situation i would do my best and submit you never know i i heard about colleagues who got accepted with only 8 months of anesthesia um uh, so you you have to try if this is if this is the the situation yeah so so anesthesia i think they can accept because i, I, I was working in anesthesia for 5 years although it's older But- yeah so even i can show lesser experience and it will be considered as a continuation of the uh, same pro- expertise but i have never worked in i have never worked in medicine actually and yeah. when i uh, now i have started to work most likely i will work as a sho in the medicine but it's not a problem but because i have to work in itu to earn money earn salary so i cannot give more than a day in a week so even if i so whether it will be considered really 8 month even if i do 8 month or one year even will it be considered as a one year if i do once uh, a, a week uh, in the medicine no i mean if you ask me whether once a week is considered one year i doubt it i don't think so we have to include all your previous experiences so i think in your anesthetic situation it it might work because you have experience in anesthetics and this will do as a consideration but for medicine i would if i compare it to the anesthetic for my situation for example and i know many people who submitted anesthetics uh, because they were doing it as a, as an sho as you said during their full time work they need certain number of days to equate it to the 12 months so uh, i don't know how practical is this for you but if i were you i might just go in uh, in some of my free days try to, to do some medicine in the hospital just to get as much as you can uh, uh so so uh, will uh, for example if i do whatever i can do means one day and then maybe some weekends yeah. and something like that and then uh because i i was thinking mean because i am working in medical icu for last 7 8 years yeah. so uh, can they consider that experience as a part of medicine because you you have told the same thing that uh, your alexandria itu experience has been considered in the medical part oh absolutely so you worked in medical itu before yeah so i worked in medical itu in saudi and dubai so yes. it was pure medical itu uh, yeah. yeah so actually it was not uh, covering the surgical part actually there so it was pure medical itu there was some neuro itu also it can uh, definitely count they clearly told me in the email that my medical icu was uh, considered as part of medicine it will it will probably most likely count so uh, for example actually if i i show the logbook with the my postings in different itu uh, uh, in in saudi arab like uh, 
six month in medical icu six month in neuro icu or four month in neuro itu so it might be considered what do you think about that yes yeah yeah i think so yeah and what do you think about competencies from saudi arabia or dubai if i get some dopes and icax uh, signed but it will be post dated definitely so do you think it will be considered or better to do all the competencies here no if anything you get from pre- because you need the 5 years yeah it, it, you, everything will be considered if you submit something within the last 5 years everything will be considered because you are you are submitting your application let's say within 1 year from now yeah. right okay so you will have 1 year 1 and a half year of uk experience and the three and a half years in uh, south in dubai right or saudi yeah. Uh, yeah. then you have to submit competencies from these countries and they they, they count they take everything in consideration as long it is done the right way by okay. a performer and verified by someone who is in a senior position okay okay thank you very much okay. perfect uh, deepak uh, I am asking you to unmute yourself Deepak. Yeah, thank you. Uh Hatem again, thank you. Uh I'll be asking more questions because I'm uh, nearly finishing my visa application. I'll be submitting in next 6 months. Uh I have a couple of questions. Uh one regarding the quality improvement projects. I've done five quality improvement projects till now. What is the evidence they require to upload on the caesar application is it just the last bit about the recommendation and that uh, the certificate from the uh, from your clinical effectiveness uh, governance uh, uh, meetings or the meetings which the minutes of the meeting you have done to make those projects or what else is required in the quality improvement project that's my first question and my second question is regarding anonymization of the uh, letters so i've got few uh, complaint letters thank you letters those have the names uh, written in initials like uh, for yourself hatem it'll be written as hi or ha is that valid or should i take those off uh, the letters as well so these are my two questions So let's okay. start from the second question uh, first. The, this yeah. these letters are your name letters or the person sending to you? The person is sending to me. So he has mentioned the patient's name as HI. No, it has to be taken off completely. So completely. this is a big thing for the GMC. I have to tell you that I was lucky because when I submitted my application initially I had a couple of papers which just showed subtly a little bit of a hospital number and one of them showed a patient surname and I got a warning from the GMC in the first email that this is a serious violation of patient confidentiality and this will have to be reported to the college after they send in the the thing I was you can't imagine how scary I was how scared i was but luckily alhamdulillah nothing happened and things went well and i knew that if this is something that is so significantly in the application this can be a serious concern in the application so remove anything that relates to the patient anything especially uh, names letters referring to the names hospital numbers completely and I, there is an advice that i didn't do it but people told me about it later on Le- have someone maybe your wife or anyone that you know or any of your friends to walk through your papers that could contain patient information to double check with their eyes to make sure that there's nothing there that is the answer of your question the second or the first question is about the clinical governance and the audit so if if we talk about the audit or the quality improvement project you need to submit something that confirm that you have done it which includes as you've said certificate of completion by 
your audit lead in the hospital. It will include certificate of presentation in a clinical governance meeting, but you have to clearly submit evidence that you have closed the loop or closed the cycle of the audit. This has to be clearly mentioned. If this is not mentioned in those certificate, what they asked me to do is to submit a word file that I wrote in this word file, what does my audit contains and what is the evidence that I have closed the loop? Starting from the beginning, thinking about the problem, uh, analyzing it, and then implementing change and then reassessing and re-auditing. So this is what you need about the audit. And the clinical governance, which is uh, the bigger title, which will include, as you may all know, is the attendance in morbidity, mortality meetings, attendance in clinical governance meeting, quality control meetings, um, etc. Perfect. Uh, Hatim, I have myself a few questions. I'll keep it till the end, uh, but uh, we'll take Bashir. Bashir, unmute yourself, please. Shukran. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, the cost of the Caesar first, and if it's rejected from the council or coming back by many emails like that, uh, they will re-cost uh, again, means they you will pay again or not? Uh, uh, honestly, I don't know. Because if you're talking about rejection from the college, I don't know. Because what I know is that there is, so there is the reply from the college can be one of three. It can be success, which is uh, probably about 30% of applications, 30 or 40%. The second option is review. They will reply asking for further evidence, which is probably the majority of replies. I rarely heard about a reject, but there must be a reject option. If, it's, if there is a catastrophic application, for example, there must be a reject in there. Uh, but I don't know about if you need to reapply, you will need to pay again. I don't know because I was not in this situation. Okay, what about the cost? So uh, the it, it is the money that is all the money that you need to pay is the money that you pay up front at the beginning of the application at, at the time of the submitting your application itself, uh, which is uh, if if I remember 1800, 1800 yeah. pounds, and that's for the first go. If uh, you fail your application and you need to resubmit, you will pay fifty percent of these fees, and if it is review or fair review or additional evidence they will give you uh, one year if you're supplying for submitting for anesthesia. I don't know about intensive care if it's different. Give it 12 month time, 12 month time. And during this period of time, you don't have to repay any fees. If you fail to submit your evidence, you need to apply from the start. Am I right with that, Dr. Hatton? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. 12, I think it's 12 months for ITU as well. I think it's the most of the specials is 12 months. Yeah, a question uh, from. I'm okay, sorry. go, go no, Bashir. Go Bashir. Uh, uh, regarding the the thank you letters or uh, the letter coming from the some uh, official letter mentioned the name. Shall we cover this name uh, to cover the name and the the numbers of the patient ID numbers or to. Uh, means to cover the name only, or what's your opinion about that? You mean the patient name and patient uh, details? ID, ID, okay. It has to be covered, it has to be anonymized. So what I did, the, you have this online, I'm, I'm sure Walid has options as well. I did the, the Adobe Acrobat uh, registration during this period, and I just went through this, uh, they have uh, something called EDACT, which removes completely anything in the document that I highlight. And I did it for all these uh, patient information. One thing I didn't mention, which I think very important, and as well when they returned the application, they asked me to do this twice. When you submit evidence of thank you letters uh, from friends, from patients, you have to be organized. And when you submit certificates of lectures, of uh, CMA certificates, 
you have to be organized. So I submitted a lot of like a lot of papers, and I initially I was submitting whatever I can, whatever I have, and then the the officer of the GMC like she was politely uh, telling me off, like I have to be putting this in an organized way in one folder together. When I initially did it, because you you have to scan hundreds and hundreds of papers. I wasn't careful about aligning the papers together in one folder. So some of them were aligned, the portrait, the others were aligned. Uh, uh, the other were, yeah. But they told me everything has to be well aligned clearly and put together in one PDF file when you do that. I think if you do this from the beginning, you will save your time probably the need for a reply for a review from the from the GMC to return your application. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, perfect. I, I would refer uh, our colleagues here to the very first lecture when I was talking about the front end and the back end. When the papers come back to you asking for modification, this is when you start to realize that organization and being organized from the first go saves you a lot of time and effort. So. If you are putting everything in folders and subfolders and they are referring to this document to review something, so you know where that document lies in your application. So when you review that, you know who is this perform performer related to. Like that's a thank you letter from a patient, but it's from the Mercy Hospital, for example. And you forgot that because you are submitting a lot of evidence, like maybe 60 or 70 papers from that kind. When it comes back to you, you need a new pro forma. If you don't know where this patient thank you letter came from, that you will be like running in vicious circuits. That's why you need to be extremely organized. And I put the Excel sheet in the Telegram group. The Excel sheet is the back end. So it's, it's coming like in lines, okay, and columns. The line is the evidence and the columns are the hospitals. And then you write whatever you need. This is this way was not mentioned anywhere, but believe me, it saved me like my papers came back from the medical council three times. Every time I go, I was going back to the Excel sheet and finding where is this dot, like this thank you letter from this one letter, thank you letter for number one or two or seven. And then I'm going back to get the pro forma signed from this hospital. Saved me a lot of time, a lot of effort. So I cannot stress that enough. Uh, you can go back to this uh, first lecture that was discussed there in full details. Osama Abdul Hafiz is asking, if I am including my MD from Egypt in my application, does it need to be EPIC verified uh, or just authenticated? So uh, I have to say, I have no information about EPIC because I didn't need to do any of this. Everything I submitted was just authenticated. So the, cert so the certificates have to be authenticated. I don't think, in my experience, I didn't need to even, I don't know what is EPIC, to, just to explain to you. Um, and this is probably an, an example that it is not mandatory for the CSER to do these things. Uh, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Ali, but I didn't need to do, need to do any of these yeah. or the certificates. Yeah, absolutely right. You need EPIC only once in the first General Medical Council registration to verify your uh, bachelor degree or bachelor degree, however you pronounce it. But anything comes after should be authenticated, not verified via the EPIC. So authentication, means it is officially sealed. And if the seal is in Arabic, it needs to be translated from a solicitor. If it is in English, it, it's fine. Uh, so um, for MD, because I submitted my MD as well in anesthetics and it's related to the medical council, not to intensive care or anesthesia, I know the details. You, The most important thing in your, in your MD is not the certificate. It is the curriculum of the MD which comes in 60 or 70 papers. It needs to be authenticated, so stamped and signed and dated, signed, date and stamp from the College of Medicine. So I submitted that and they reviewed it and there was a paper they commented on 
because there was a missing seal. I didn't resubmit it. So I, I just submit it as is. Uh, okay, so do we have any more questions here? The back, okay, please unmute yourself, go ahead. Thank you, Walid. Uh, uh, another couple of questions pop in. Uh, one, first one is, uh, in the new curriculum, in the learning outcome one, which is called NHS organizational management, it says we have to submit CPD evidence for simulation and human factors. <clears throat> what what were the evidences you uploaded for this? And the second question is regarding reflections. So in all the learning outcomes, they ask for reflective uh, practice evidence. How many reflections did you submit for your application? Thank you. No problem. So you, you're talking about, when you talk about the new curriculum, do you talk about the one just released last last month by the GMC or the- Yes, the... yes. So, that, so that's the new curriculum, which is just now released because sure. I opened my application last month. Sure. Uh, all I got was the, everything was on the new cur curriculum and I prepared for the old curriculum. So that is what I'm talking about. So actually, I, I actually highlighted this to uh, Walid before I, we, when we were discussing about this uh, webinar. I submitted everything before the new curriculum. So I, I, I don't have information, unfortunately, about it. And all what we discussed is based on my experience in the, the I would say, the old curriculum, the one before this one. But I did submit evidence relates to human factors. I didn't submit evidence related to simulation directly, uh, but human factors, I have done a human factors training, which is very important generally as part of your consultant career in the UK. Uh, so when you, when, I mean, I, I was working as a consultant for two years before I submitted my application. So what, what, few things are needed for you on your evidence uh, not only for the GMC as a Caesar, but also for your job applications. One of them is the human factors and the management and leadership training courses. And uh, the human factors was a course that I did. And I know that many trusts and many hospitals are doing it. Um, so this is what I did. Okay, so uh, now I don't think we have any more questions from our colleagues here. I have three big questions, uh, so please bear with me, Dr. Uh, Hatem. Fellowships. There is a lot of fellowships coming now between one and two years in United Kingdom, and they say this is a pre-Caesar or a preparatory for Caesar application. Are they giving you the intensive care medicine inside or what is the scenario here? So if, if you have a clue, definitely, I, I know that you didn't do that yourself, but if you came, came across any of our colleagues that did this kind of fellowships. Yeah, I know very well that there are several hospitals now having uh, a programmed, structured uh, a Caesar fellowship, yes. which I think very good. Um, these fellowships are mainly given by big hospitals um, because they can give you the chance of rotating in the hospital and doing several things like, uh, and especially for ICU, I think it's a very good way of uh, pursuing the Caesar, especially if you go for the big trusts where you will not have difficulty in needing um, uh, another specialist, like for example, pediatric, neuro. If you have all of this under one umbrella in one hospital, it will be great. And I do believe those hospitals really support the trainees. If it, when it's, even, if it, even if it's not announced as a Caesar Fellowship, the system is very supportive here. When you want to do something, everyone will help you. Uh, it will be feasible as per your duties and calls to do medicine beside the intensive care. Whatever you need to do, they will find a way for you to do it. That's it. Okay, perfect. Because uh, I, I know about few good number of fellowships uh, that's advertised with support of Caesar in, in, in major, major hospitals. So uh, 
the second question was about the new changes and you already answered that question. Uh, I had seen that you submitted your application, Dr. Hatim, with uh, the intensive care medicine diploma. You didn't have to sit the uh, FFICM. So certification-wise, FFICM is not mandatory. So any equivalent, what are the equivalents that you think you had seen colleagues uh, done and got Caesar application approved without FICM, FFICM? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the specialty specific guidance document, uh, and maybe I can try to quickly uh, get it uh, online while we talk. This is a very important document, uh, Dr. Walid, and I'm sure most of you have seen it. Uh, this document has one page which shows you the accepted qualifications as a test of knowledge Good. for intensive care medicine. The top of these is FFICM. It is mandatory for UK trainees, but for people like us who are coming from outside the UK, there are several other alternatives. The EDIC is one of them. Mm -hmm. There are also the, I think the fellowship, I don't want to make them up, but maybe I can uh, quickly get this from the website. Uh, uh, le yes, I think it's here. Yeah, I have the application. I have it in front of. Can you see my uh, my screen? Uh, we can. No, if you stop your share and share your desktop. Oh yes, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. So now you can see my screen. Yeah. So I will, I'm going through this document, which is very, I think you should read this document and memorize it by heart. This has everything you need to uh, get for the Caesar. So test of knowledge. Can you see the list of accepted? Yeah, uh, yeah. The specialist medical qualifications. So the top is FFICM, but the other accepted ones are the EDIC, the DICM, and the FCICM. It's probably uh, the New Zealand one. I'm not sure, or the Australian one. But I think the EDIC is the one that is feasible to all of us as a well-known uh, certification. I know, I knew, and I heard that there might be a change in the future that the FFICM could be a mandatory requirement for CSER applicants, but this has not happened yet. And even after the release of the new curriculum, the EDIC is still a recognized specialty, which is a very good news. Good. So um, any more questions? Perfect. So let's recap, Dr. Hatem, it's two years one year in intensive care and one year in medicine. Uh, we can accept six months out of the medicine year as an emergency uh, room training, emergency department training, or acute medicine training. And that's the training section of it, plus the qualification, which is the fellowship uh, of intensive care medicine from UK or European diploma or other qualifications. This is the two legs of the CSER application, two main foundations, yeah. plus the other parts of uh, like the uh, clinical governance and, and audits and, and quality improvement projects and management and leadership, the other 30% to 25% of the applications. So that's the main section. There is new regulations, which none of us uh, know enough about it. So that explains the rush and the pressure on the new, uh, on, on the Caesar applications in the last few months before the new uh, regulations uh, come on board. Yeah. Um, so we would advise, if you are doing that from the United Kingdom, I would strongly advise if you go to fellowship two years, this is the easiest way if there's something nearby or around uh, that's easy for you and your family. Uh, otherwise, if you are from overseas, now I think you know what you need to submit. Um, I think there are a few questions quickly, Dr. Walid, that we missed. Dr. Okay. D, 
Yeah, yeah go ahead. About reflections. Uh, so the the appraisal. So when I submitted, it was the time that I already did almost more than three years uh, or three and a half years uh, in the UK. So I had a yearly appraisal and every appraisal has a detailed reflection section. So I have submitted many reflections, but they were all part of my annual appraisal where you reflect on every piece of evidence that you submit. So I think reflection is very important, but I didn't submit separate reflection to what I had with my appraisal. If this answers Dr. Dr. Deepak's question. Perfect. Did they miss anything else? Uh, Dr. Muhammad Anwar is asking, I have a master's degree in critical care medicine eight years back, can be submitted without a logbook? Yes, uh, I think I, we answer, We said the, the whole thing is mainly for the last five years, but anything beyond that, you submit anything you have. And the master's of science in intensive care medicine doesn't count in uh, the approved certificates. You have to have your European diploma or the uh, fellowship. So the master on its own doesn't really count, same as the MD, if we're talking about single uh, document. So it, it will count if you add that to the FFICM or European Diploma. It definitely counts, but I don't think it's it's enough on its own. Uh, okay, so please, uh, it's now or never. Raise hands if you need any more questions. So one question from Dr. Ahmed Osama, do we have to anonym, anonymize colleagues' names on the rota? The answer is no. You don't need to anonymize colleagues' names on the rota. Okay. Or on so, any document. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we discussed that three, four times before. We highlight that again uh, tonight. Any patient col name should be removed completely, MR numbers. Colleagues is okay to leave their names and uh, their details. Uh, except if it is uh, this colleague is uh, an advice given in something like a mortality, morbidity, something that your colleague may feel a bit ashamed of that one. So you need to omit his name. So if it's thank you letter, it's fine. But if it was a problem, a, a, a problem related to colleague, I think you need to remove his name as well. That was an advice from a consultant got his uh, application recently. Having MRCP can replace medicine rotation. Um, Dr. Hatton, please go ahead. It doesn't, but it can help. So again, I know that MRCP, the, the, they look at it somehow that it can add some value and maybe they can reduce the, the amount of time that you need to have as medicine, but it doesn't replace, but it can help similar to the whatever medicine that you have done before. Okay. Uh, Mu'min is saying EDAIC, which is European Diploma of Anesthesia and Intensive Care, is okay, or just European Diploma of Intensive Care, EDIC? Which one is needed? I think it's only European Diploma of Intensive okay. Care, as per the evidence we had shown here online. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Okay. Mohammed Anwar, I think having MRCP can replace medicine rotation as an evidence in working in medicine for six months. So, okay, I think we answered that question. Okay, two more messages. Can I get, okay. They are asking to share your email. I would say Dr. Hatim, if you write that in, uh, in a message, otherwise it will be on the YouTube and you will not tolerate that, I'm sure. <laughs> Anytime, sorry, without Thanks. that. Discard this one. Okay, it's fine. So this is the, the last one. Okay. Uh, I cannot thank you enough, uh, Dr. Hatton, for uh, being uh, with us for more than 90 minutes. Uh, and uh, we do really appreciate uh, the knowledge exchange here. May Allah bless uh, you and your family and uh, give you uh, good rewards for your time and effort you spent with us uh, tonight. Uh, and I think all our colleagues here uh, are really uh, appreciating your effort tonight. So thanks a million, accept our virtual bunch of flowers until the COVID finishes and uh, hopefully see you in uh, another 
meeting or a conference, hopefully soon, hopefully physical, we fed off from the virtuals and the mic is you to finish the meeting and to end the meeting. I'm very thankful to you as well, Dr. Walid, for inviting me uh, to share my experience with my colleagues and uh, I wish you all the best. Please just be patient, work hard and especially it's a tedious process, but once you finish, you will feel a big relief. So inshallah, you will all get it well and just stay persistent and uh, I'm sure you will do it at the end. All the best. And if you have any question anytime, don't hesitate, just drop, drop me a, an email. And thank you, Dr. Walid, for all the work you're doing for Life Saving Academy. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks a million. Thanks everyone on board. Thanks a million. Have a good night.